Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for Monday, the 28th of January. All right, a little bit later than usual with the uh, Australian holiday, but uh, let's just have a look where the uh, currencies are on, uh, today. Sort of, we're sort of more than halfway through the Asian session. Uh, it's a good way to start to look at look at where those moves on Friday are sitting at the moment. Now, the Aussie dollar, Kiwi. Uh, Euro sterling continues to sort of charge higher on you know the possibilities of a of a good Brexit ending, um, and dollar yen after a bit of a choppy trading through some you know pretty weak trend lines, it's starting to drift lower. And dollar CAD felt the uh, the full brunt of the dollar weakness on Friday. Now, what was going on with all these moves? Now, this is it's a little bit disappointing because to me, Euro had a really nice formation technically. We got the sort of draggy comments saying that growth in uh, Eurozone was falling, et cetera, et cetera. So really technical and fundamental picture for Euro was, um, you know, looking pretty sour. And this is what I was sort of talking about on Friday. If you, if you go back and have a look at that, I was saying, well, I've got a smaller trade size on here because we still don't know what's going on with the US dollar. And sure enough, uh, Trump came out and um, surprised everyone, got the US uh, government shut down. Uh, turned around and then, well, it looks like for the next three weeks at least, the uh, US government is going to be open so they can get a few things done, probably clear a bit of backlog. So now, as far as the news coming out, well, of course, the um, the Fed this week is going to be very important. To me, as much as, as much hype as the media want to give this, uh, we still don't have all the fundamental releases uh, out in the market from the US dollar. So what's the Fed going to, um, what have they got to look at to, to, to determine, sorry, uh, policy? So they've got nothing there. So to me, you can almost put a line through this meeting as far as I can tell. If anything, they may be erring on the side of caution and saying, well, if we don't know what the government's doing. Well, then we can't really do our job. And, and that may create a little bit of uncertainty, uh, dollar weakness potentially coming in even further. Uh, Sterling, yeah, it's rallying on, on a Brexit deal. It's hopes. Don't forget the highlight here is, or is the main term is hopes. This could, uh, Sterling could drop two or 300 points very quickly at any stage, uh, like it has done over the past, um, uh, you know, year. Uh, looking at the reaction to Friday's government reopening, stocks were rallying, um, you know, positive stocks, you know, every, everyone's really happy with that sort of rubbish. So to me, it's just, this is geopolitics at its, at its absolute worst. Um, there's still the uh, US-China uh, trade issue, which is uh, chopping about as far as comments from various US officials saying, uh, one saying it's miles, miles and miles away from getting any deal, others saying there's a good deal imminent. So it's very hard to work out what is exactly going on across the board. And this is, this is where you just gotta be really patient and wait to see how things are lining up. Now, of course, when you have a look at the uh, the different pairs, now I've got the US dollar index here. Um, yeah, it's it's been belted on Friday uh, following Trump's uh, announcement. And the US dollar, as you saw on the majors, um, really turned around a lot of big positions. Dollar China, you'd, you'd have to think there's there's some good deal coming out. It's it's uh, dropped down to 6.74. So the, the one, the offshore one appreciating, tells me there's probably probably a good deal coming up. Now, Asian equities, you know, it's a little bit mixed. Um, of, of course, the Australian equity market's closed, but um, Asian equities a little bit on the red side. So to me, that's once again, a little bit unsettled as to exactly what's going on. Now, if I give you a look at the, um, I've just updated the MyFX Trading Hub. Now, there's a couple of key things to look at here as we come through things, but now, first and foremost, what's going on with the um, market conditions? Well, geopolitics are dominating, right? What we have seen, we've seen some turnaround in some positioning. Now, the euro bounced 100, say 100 points on Friday. The market was short and getting shorter on the back of Draghi's comments. So the, the trade setup was very good, but the unknown, uh, which is the US dollar side of things, and Trump um, really put a spanner in the works. And we've seen some clean out now. The Aussie dollar also, when you come back and have a look at these charts, and I'll just flick over, back over to them, uh, just for a second, the the main part here is is looking at where what was in the market already. Now, there's there was a big sort of thinking that with the local banks here raising interest rates, it's going to put pressure on the RBA to uh, cut. Now, that's just a speculative uh, thing, but it was obviously a very raw nerve. And you saw how the Aussie came off. 
Now, we haven't heard from the Aussie, from the RBA, but the market was short Aussie. As I mentioned, it was short Euro. So we've seen these things spike and just taking out all the positions that were already in them. The Kiwi was drifting lower as well. It's uh, shot to the top side with that move. Um, and then you've seen the US dollar move across the board here. Obviously, the, um, the fundamentals in Canada have all been very weak. So dollar cab was moving to the top side uh, and looks set for higher levels. Then once again, you get this um, dollar weakness and all of those positions are flushed out as well. It looks like, if anything, everyone's staying out of sterling. Okay, it's slowly moving to the top side. Of course, it moves with that dollar move, but you know that whole dollar weakness really didn't. You know, of course, sterling. So I was going to say, really didn't impact as much as the other currencies because there isn't a lot of as much position squaring on the back of all this news. So when you come back to trying to work out what's going on, just have a look at where things are. Like you know, and when geopolitics are in the market, to me, it's a signal just to wait. Now, I'm still bearish, Euro, absolutely, but I've got to wait to get some sort of clarity on the US dollar. Now, this is the overall major pair outlook, but if you switch back into and click on these, um, either the symbol or the arrow there, you'll go into the detailed analysis. Yeah, short term, the US dollar index is going down, but medium term and long term, it's pretty much trading sideways. And that's the same for a lot of these pairs here, the dollar pairs, dollar yen, dollar CAD, dollar Swiss. Yeah, sure, this very short term direction, but medium to long term, they aren't really going anywhere. So don't get caught up in the noise of the market with the, say, the hourly charts, right? You've just got to be patient and wait for things to come back. Now, Euro, I'm still bearish Euro sort of on the fundamental side of things, especially with regards to central bank being slightly dovish. But you know what? The technical side has corrected that, that move for the moment. I still expect Euro to come off, but not just yet. The market's waiting to work out what does this US government reactivation mean? How long is it for? And what's it going to do for us as far as all the fundamentals? Sterling, of course, just cruising to the top side. Very hard. As I said, when you're looking at the updates, this is all on hopes of the UK Parliament coming out and sorting, some, sorting something out. Now, there was a report on Friday that the Queen stepping in sent a letter to Parliament saying, pull your heads in, sort out this deal uh, and move on. Okay, so I don't know if that's going to have an impact, but if the Queen's getting involved you know that everyone's sick and tired of this and the deal is there. So uh, potentially sterling back to 135, absolutely. Aussie dollar, as I mentioned uh, Thursday, this is going to be a, a real raw nerve with the local rates down here. The, the housing market in, in the major cities in Australia is starting to feel the pinch. And I think the, these latest moves by the local banks against the central bank will um, really create some good trading opportunities as we go forward. So you're just going to be patient as we do that. Kiwi, very close. Out of all the other pairs here, if I just clear that, the sterling's got very clear direction. Kiwi is very close to going into a uh, upward trend. Okay, on the hours, it's moving higher. Da uh, dailies and weeklies, it's very close to big levels and potentially moving topside. So keep an eye on Kiwi topside. That's where I think there's um, some potential activity. Now, Monday... Okay, we've got Draghi and uh, the Bank of England Governor Carney speaking. You will just, just keep an eye on what, what, what is going on here. Carney's got a big Q&A uh, forum that he's attending and there will be questions on Draghi about his comments from last week. So we may see some direction, but there are, but there are speeches. Right? These are very high impacting numbers. That's why they're red and that's where the major uh, focus will be. And that's all we've pretty much got for Monday. I'm actually going to be sort of watching Monday just let it pass and see how things pan out. And then we've got some um, other releases here coming up, which, uh, you know, like the CB, the consumer confidence numbers out of the US, I've got this as a blue number, which means basically no trading rules apply. If you just scroll to the bottom here, I just updated the colours, uh, just so the people who do have um, colour blindness issues can actually see the actual colours. Now, we do have a big week, but just to uh, highlight once again, the, uh, the color code here with these uh, economic numbers. Red, of course, uh, very high impacting. You're gonna be flat before these releases and wait 30 seconds afterwards. The yellow ones, like the CPI flash estimate, it's gonna be flat before it, but you can trade as soon as that release comes out. And obviously the blue ones, we just wanna highlight these opportunities for you because they are potential trading opportunities, but you do not have to square up. You can trade the numbers, you can hold positions, Etc. through these releases as well. So it's going to give you a lot more flexibility as we go forward. 
Now, just to um, uh, finish up on Mondays, generally what you should be doing is flicking through the calendar and highlighting the potential big uh, moving numbers of the Aussie CPI number. Now, this is not red. It's, you have to be flat before this, but you can trade it afterwards because it's one number. When you have something like the non-farm payrolls, which is the employment numbers, there's three variables that come out and it's too hard to sort of try and work out which one, they all have to be positive or weak to get the move. So with those, those variables, that's why they are red. So the Aussie CPI number is huge, right? This, uh, it's gonna be very important to, for the Aussie dollar going forward. The FOMC, of course, it's gonna be a highlight. Um, now, it always is because the Fed is the biggest sort of central bank globally. But what do they have to look at? Well, they've got no fundamentals. So we'll have to wait and see what they've got to say. They could really be erring on the side of caution. That could see some really good uh, or consistent US dollar weakness, which will give us direction on all the other currency pairs. So that's going to be a major focus. And then as we go forward, we're starting to get into some more uh, Chinese numbers, manufacturing numbers. There's two different numbers coming out. They should give us a bit more insight what, to what, how those tariffs are impacting China. CAD GDP figures, always a, um, a solid number to, to give the, the dollar CAD direction. And then you come down to, uh, once you get into Friday's trading, we've got a, we've got a bunch of things coming out which uh, could all potentially kick things off. Obviously, the uh, Chinese manufacturing numbers, uh, UK manufacturing. As I said, with, with the UK data, if anything, I'm, I'm potentially looking to trade if the data is strong because the momentum is to the top side. So that's where the action is. Non-farm payrolls is going to be the uh, main event, but we do have uh, Eurozone CPI numbers there ahead of it. All right, so plenty of big releases this week. Uh, so you can actually go about, spend your day Monday, get your charts up to speed, and plan the opportunities as they uh, around your, your week. All right, and that's where the, uh, the general structure of your trading should be, looking at the, the general market conditions, trying to work out if any of the major pairs have got specific direction, and then look at where those upcoming releases are going to impact and which pairs, what days they're going to impact those pairs and make sure you're ahead of the curve. Now, I got stitched up on that uh, Euro. Um, I was really disappointed the way that Trump led that um, push on Friday, especially after Thursday when all the talk was they, they knocked back a couple of bills. There was no chance of a US uh, government opening up. Next thing you know, it's open. So... What do you do? You have a plan and make sure you uh, don't run the stops too far. All right, guys, that's it for me. Uh, as I said, a uh, bit of a holiday down here. We should get a bit more clarity around what's going on with these currency pairs once the European and US markets open up on Monday. Uh, you know, the market needs a bit of time to filter in all the variables that have, been, that have come out. And everyone's still trying to work out what the hell is going on uh, and what's the impact of the US dollar on the um, on the rest of the pair. So, of course, the Fed will be the focus, but uh, keep an eye on this US government shutdown and anything to do with China, with Chinese data coming out and that China trade issue, it's going to be a hot topic for, for, uh, for some time. All right, guys, that's it from me. The uh, Have a good trade day, have a good week, and I'll see you in the 247 Trade Zone. Cheerio.